You might remember Burrow Burlingame's byline from the Honolulu Star Bulletin and the Star Advertiser, but he's always had an interest in World War II history and airplanes. And now, as the curator at the Pacific Aviation Museum Pearl Harbor, he gets to combine those two passions. Well, I'm a pretty typical Air Force kid. Uh, I was born in 1953, so I'm really, really old. Uh, my dad uh, joined the Army Air Forces. Uh, so the Air Force I grew up in, a lot of the customs and traditionals were still very Army at the time. But I was born in Alaska, lived in Tennessee and in the South, but mainly grew up in Taiwan and in Hawaii. I moved here when I was 10 years old, where I became a Boy Scout, Eagle Scout, you know, explorer, the whole nine yards. Went to Radford High School, graduated in 1971, and there I got interested in cartooning and photography and journalism. Went to the uh, uh, Leeward Community College for two years, got my Associate of Arts degree, a general Associate of Arts, but I was editor of the student newspaper out there. Uh, settled on a journalism school uh, in Missouri, the University of Missouri. I majored in photojournalism and in forensic anthropology. So I have, my background is basically in, in visual studies and also in science. And so I've always used a scientific approach to things. Came back to Hawaii and got married. And we both went to work at the Sun Press newspapers. She was a, a reporter there and uh, I was the chief photographer. And I worked there for a couple years. And then I got laid off but I went to uh, work as editor of the Hawaii Coastal Zone News, and then I became the media advisor for Hawaii Pacific University. And when I was there, uh, the Star Bulletin recruited me as a layout editor in the feature department because they liked my photographic and art and layout skills. The funny thing is, is because the newspaper was uh, unionized and the photographers and the layout people and the writers were different unions, I was not allowed to do any photography, even though that's basically why I was hired in the first place. And we had probably the greatest writing staff the Star Bulletin ever had at the time. We had John Christensen and Steve Spence, and mainly Lois Taylor uh, were basically our, our major feature writers, and I learned a lot from them. I learned that journalism isn't writing, it's editing, for example. And it, it's knowing what to get rid of to make sure the nut of the story is still there. The thing about feature writing is you never know what's going to be thrown at you. If you're you know, covering the courts or you're covering the legislature, you know when you go into work you're going to go to court or to the legislature that day. At feature writing you walk in and the editor just throws something at you and says, you know, Sulu is in town, who the heck is he, you know, go find out. Or, you know, there's a lion down at the zoo that's sick, go check that out. So you become like an instant expert in everything. My primary personal interest was in stories that provide context. And that is, there's something going on, but why is it going on and how did it get to the way it is? And you basically need a lot of inches to do that sort of story. And so the feature department was the right place to do that. The thing about journalism is that I didn't really leave journalism, it sort of left me. Uh, when the two newspapers merged, it was like all the air went out of the room. And the, the folks who don't know, the Star Bulletin and the Advertiser were two parallel newspapers that had a joint operating agreement. And then the big corporation that owned one sold it and took over the other one, then tried to kill the other one, then got fought out in courts. And we did the good fight at the Star Bulletin uh, for about 10 years, keeping the newspaper alive. But when the two newspapers were no longer in competition, it's like being on a baseball team with no one to play. You know, you can get out there and you can shag and hit fungos, but uh, you know, you're not running up any sort of score, so. Right about that time, the uh, museum director, uh, I was volunteering more at the museum, and the museum director recruited me, essentially, for the job. He thought I would work out well. When I went to work here, I, I basically knew curatorial work. I'd already been doing it for a long time at the airport museum, and had studied it, and I'd studied it at other museums. My primary job for the first year or so was basically setting up systems and trying to figure out what our interpretive tracks were and figuring out the, the what you call the range of interpretation and focusing on, on ways of, of really getting visitors to understand the message we're trying to get across. The thing about journalism is people don't read really anymore. And the reason the inverted pyramid was invented in journalism is so you pick up the main thing from the headline, you pick up a little bit more from the subhead, and then you pick up a little bit more from the lead of the story. And if you don't go any farther, you still have the gist of what the story's all about. I brought that sort of uh, 
consumer knowledge to the uh, museum. And when we do signage now, there may be people who don't want to read to the end of it, but they still get the gist of it in the first couple of lines. And that's just basic communication skills. You use what tools are available to do it best. You know, it might be a pen, it might be a computer, it might be a, uh, you know, a, a, a wrench that you design so kids can turn a, a bolt easily. And journalism, like any other profession, is changing. And nowadays, it's more online. Uh, there's still a lot of people that read print newspapers. And it, uh, it's not pr that print newspapers are dying, it's that advertising in them died and it's dragging them down with it. Uh, so the whole nature of advertising is what's changed. But people are still hungry for information and they're going to other places. But that information still has to be gathered and edited and created by journalists. I've done a number of books. As an aviation historian, I got interested in the torpedo damage to the battleships and Battleship Row and noticed that some of the torpedo damage was larger than the others and wondered if Japanese submarines had caused that damage. And so I started working on a book about that and wound up with a book that became the standard reference for the Japanese submarine assault on Hawaii and the West Coast. It's called Advanced Force Pearl Harbor. Uh, I got really into Chicago blues, Paul Butterfield, and learned to play guitar and harmonica, and I played in blues bands in high school and up into college and uh, dropped out for a little while. And then started playing again uh, about 10, 15 years ago, and have played in bands, and I sit in with some other folks, and have, I got really into songwriting, and uh, uh, songwriting's fun, it's just, and it, it's like, you know, honing a diamond, you get rid of everything extraneous till you've got essentially a pop song, and uh, which I think, I consider pop songs to be a high expression of art, because they're so, you know, pure in what they are. We have a rule in newspapers that for every uh, letter of praise you get, you get about 200 letters of complaint. But at this job, at the end of the day, everyone leaves with a smile on their face. And people learn, and kids you know, get to know aviation, and, and adults get to see old friends that are airplanes, and it's all part of our cultural and pop cultural history. And so it, it's a matter of reinforcing and invigorating your ties to aviation.